Musharraf about restoring the Constitution. Uh, this is an administration that stepped all over our own Constitution in the process. And this isn't. Elec elections are, there's an expression in, in Spanish so that says what's elections... what's more important, human well, rights or national security? Well, obviously, national security, keeping the country safe. When you take the oath of office on January 20th, right. you promise to do two things. And that is to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States and protect our country against enemies, both foreign and domestic. The security of the country is number one, obviously, All right. here. Okay. All right. Now, secondly, this Thank doesn't you. mean elections are only one note, as they say, in the tune of democracy here. Be careful what you wish for. If there were totally free elections, and many of these countries we're talking about today, the Islamic Jihad or the Islamic Brotherhood would win 85% of the vote. That's not a great outcome for us at this point here. All right. So we need to have a sense of balance about this here. I disagree with those who suggest here that we ought to condition uh, Musharraf's actions regarding some of these issues on aid and assistance here. There's only one way into Afghanistan. It's through Pakistan. The generals in the military control the nuclear weaponry here. We need to move and remind Musharraf that there are, there are obligations he needs to fulfill. Be careful here about insisting right, upon... You answer, you answer oh, the question, Let me finish, Senator. Musharraf, because literally, then you have to do what you say you're going to do. And if he doesn't do what he's suggesting, then you have to terminate right. that relationship, and that puts this country in a very, very dangerous position. You say right. national security is more important than human rights. Senator Clinton, what do you say? I agree with that completely. I mean, the first obligation of the President of the United States is to protect and defend the United States of America. That doesn't mean that it is to the exclusion of other interests. And there's absolutely a connection between a democratic regime and heightened security for the United States. That's what's so tragic about this situation. After 9-11, President Bush had a chance to chart a different course, both in Pakistan and in Afghanistan, and could have been very clear about what our expectations were. We are now in a bind. And it is partly, not completely, but partly a result of the failed policies of the Bush administration. So where we are today means that we have to say to President Musharraf, look, this is not in your interest either. This is not in the interest of the United States. It is not in your interest to either stay in power or stay alive. We have to figure out how we're going to navigate this. When I was meeting with him earlier this year, I asked him if he would accept a high-level presidential envoy to begin to negotiate some of these issues. He said, yes, I got back. I called the White House. I asked them to send such a high-level envoy. They did not do it. They're going to send one now. So, I mean, you've got to stay on top of this, and you have to manage it all the time. That requires presidential attention. We haven't had thank that. You. And thank, part of the reason you, is, the, is obvious now. John Roberts. Hello. Hello. Stand by. Stand by. John Roberts, go ahead. You're going to have a chance. All right. Uh, to uh, Governor Richardson, uh, a military uh, police unit from the Nevada National Guard uh, stationed about 12 miles from here, just left for its third tour of duty in Iraq. I, I want to talk to you for just a moment here about the effect of the troop increase over there. It's true that 2007 is the deadliest year so far since 2003 for American forces. But it's also true that U.S. troop deaths have been declining steadily since the spring. And in fact, in the month of October, they were at their lowest level in nearly two years. At the same time, there has been a marked decline in the number of deaths of Iraqi people. Is General David Petraeus correct when he says that the troop increase is bringing security to Iraq? John, uh, we shouldn't be talking about body counts. One American death is too much. And what I am saying here is the surge is not working. There is less, right now, less possibility of a political solution. Three out of the 18 benchmarks, the General Accounting Office, uh, have been fulfilled. Uh, even, above, even among Republican math, that is a failing grade. <laughs> what I'm saying also is that, look at this statistic. 65% of the Iraqi people now say it's okay to shoot an American soldier. Our troops are dying. Over 3,800. Two today. 60,000 wounded, casualties, mentally, mainly mental trauma. Now, my position is that we get the troops out in a year, leave no residual forces behind, unlike some of my colleagues here that want to leave some till 2013. But not just wave goodbye, because we have a responsibility. And that is, one, to get a political compromise, a U.S.-led political compromise among the three groups. That they share power, the Sunni, the Shia, the Kurds. That they share oil revenues that we have an all-Muslim, all-Arab peacekeeping force with some European forces headed by the UN. 
a donor conference that involves other countries, European Union, rich Arab states, contributing to the reconstruction of Iraq, where we have spent right. $500 billion Thank you, Senator. in this war when this money should be used in America for health care, education, and for kids. Congressman Kucinich, is the troop increase Excuse right me. now, is the troop increase, as General Petraeus has put forward over these past few months, is it working? No, the occupation is fueling the insurgency. In 2003, I put forth a plan to get out of Iraq. I'm actually the only one on the stage who voted against the war, voted against funding the war 100% of the time, and also who has a plan to bring the troops home. And they should be brought home now. And let me tell you something. The Democrats in Congress have not done the right thing for the American people. They should tell President Bush, we're not going to give you another dime. We're not putting a bill on the floor. Bring them home now. Also, also, when you talked about Pakistan, you didn't get a chance to come to me on that question. But I want to point something out to you, Wolf. You cannot look at Pakistan and the destabilization that's occurring in many Muslim nations without understanding the role that our aggression against Iraq has played in contributing to that destabilization. So I'm speaking about a new policy of strength through peace, no more unilateralism, no more preemption, no more first strike, Thank open you. dialogue, diplomacy, adherence to international law. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman. Senator Obama, uh, I'll put the same question to you. Is General Petraeus' strategy working? There is no doubt that because we put American troops in Iraq, more American troops in Iraq, that they are doing a magnificent job, and they are making a difference in certain neighborhoods. But the overall strategy is failed, because we have not seen any change in behavior among Iraq's political leaders. Right. And that is the essence of what we should be trying to do in Iraq. That's why I'm going to bring this war to a close. That's why we can get our troops out, our combat troops out within 16 months. That's why we have to initiate the kind of regional diplomacy, not just talking to our friends, but talking to our enemies, like Iran and Syria, to try to stabilize the situation there. But I, I just want to make this important point, because all of us, as we're campaigning, we're seeing this in human terms. People are on two, three, four tours of duty. Families are carrying an enormous burden. This year, we saw the highest casualty rates for American troops in Iraq since this war started. The same, by the way, is true in Afghanistan. If we have seen a lowering violence rate, that's only compared to earlier this year. We're back to where we started back in 2006. All right. And so, so the notion that somehow because we've gone from horrific violence to just intolerable levels of violence, and that somehow that justifies George Bush's strategy is absolutely wrong, and I'm going to bring it to a halt when I'm President of the United Thank States. You. Thank you, Senator. Campbell Brown. Congressman Kucinich, um, we're approaching the holiday season right now, and parents across the country are in a panic. They are rifling through their toy boxes. They are throwing things away because they are so worried that toys, the products coming from China right now, are too dangerous for their children. Do you believe that the people on the stage who voted to fully open trade relations with China bear some of the responsibility for what's going on right now? Uh, well, of course they do. I mean, in the same way that people who voted for the war bear responsibility for what's going on. People who voted for the Patriot Act bear responsibility for what's going on. People who voted for Yucca Mountain bear responsibility. People have to take responsibility for their positions. Now, let's talk about China trade. The fact of the matter is, Wolf, it was well known when China trade came up, that China doesn't have environmental quality uh, standards, doesn't have health standards, doesn't have workers' rights, uh, doesn't permit people to form unions. Now, everyone knew that. And for someone to come up afterwards, and I think in the last debate, I think Hillary Clinton was, was criticized by John Edwards for uh, some trade-related issue. But the fact of the matter is, John, you voted for China trade, understanding that workers were going to be hurt. Now, you're a trial lawyer. You knew better. I'm saying that it's important. All right. Really. Sen Senator Edwards, he made, a, he made a specific reference to you. This is a fact, though. I mean, I'm not backing down from this. This is a fact. Well, People have to let, take responsibility uh, for their position. Let's ask Senator Edwards to respond. Uh, was that vote a mistake? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure what being a trial lawyer has to do with it, but uh, wait, what my response Product is, um, America, America's trade. Um, <laughs> cute, cute, Dennis. Uh, 